Hello everybody, I'm Jason Burnt from Macomb Township Government Access along with Brad Fetters and tonight we come to you from Dakota High School getting set for this Mac crossover basketball game between the Dakota Cougars and Romeo Bulldogs and Brad, we come into this game here early season, Dakota one of the favorites perhaps in the Mac to do some special things this year. Yeah, and they're already coming off a really impressive victory over Berkeley and it was really Cameron Grant that got them started and no surprise there, she's a Division I commit to Ball State and she came in with a 20-point, 12-rebound performance in the opener, and they're really going to rely on her heavily throughout the season. Dakota's got a bunch of players basically spread out, uh, but one advantage they're going to have tonight maybe against Romeo is their size down low along with Dina Moyer. Dina Moyer, Cameron Grant, the two bigs down in the post, are going to give Romeo fits. We know it just seeing the starting lineup. Romeo doesn't have a lot of size, so they're really going to have to rely on their guard play here tonight. And really, it's a contrast in styles. Dakota's going to want to fill it up offensively. They're a team that wants to play in the 50s. They want to get up and go, and Romeo's going to really want to limit things. They want to play a game in the 30s by playing clamp down zone defense. These two teams are familiar with each other. Romeo used to play up in the red, so we're expecting an outstanding ball game here tonight. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments for the opening tip on Macomb Township Government Access. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back here at Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burnt and Brad Fetters getting set for this varsity girls game between Dakota and Romeo. Let's quickly take a look at our starting lineups for both teams. First for the visiting Bulldogs, head coached by Kathy Boshears. We have number two, Reagan Mazur. Number 13, Rose Connie. Number 20, Natalie Nowak. Number 21, Mackenzie Trzewski. And number 25, Amanda LeBlanc. For Dakota, the home team, we have number 11, Ella Berger. Number 15, Jamie Mashenko. Number 22, Cameron Grant. Number 31, Tamia Townsell. And number 54, Dina Moyer, head coached by Phil McCune. Romeo coming into this contest with a one and one record coming off a tough 27-26 loss to Regina in their last contest. That game was played at Callahan Hall. So Romeo already having two games in the books. This will be Dakota's second game of the season. They come in with that one and all record. Right off the opening tap, Berger underneath. Townsville had that one blocked, but right there Grant. And you could already see early on the advantage on the boards Dakota's gonna have. Loose ball, we're gonna get a reach in foul. It looks like it's gonna go against Romeo. Yeah, Dakota's got four players all over the size of five foot ten. Romeo basically a three guard, two forward lineup out on the floor right now. So Dakota with a lot of size inside. They'll see if they can take advantage of that here in the early goings. Mashenko to inbound it to Berger. Puts it on the floor. Dina Moyer out top. They move it around. See if Dakota wants to go into the post. Mashenko fires from the outside off the mark. Board comes down to Romeo. Nice job there by Natalie Nowak, and then she was fouled. It's going to go against Tamiya Townsville, the first team foul against Dakota. 
little bit of a full court press being applied now by the Cougars, looking to turn over Romeo on their first possession. They do that. Ella Berger looking in transition. That one thrown away. She knocks it away, but on the sideline, out of bounds, it'll be Romeo basketball. So talking to Coach McCune prior to the start of the game, he liked the effort he saw out of his girls in that first game of the season, that 59-47 win over Berkeley, but thought they could really maybe take it up another level here tonight. That pressure once again forces a turnover by Romeo. And, well, first game jitters, you know, a lot of times teams come out and they've, they've practiced against each other for too long and they get out there against real opponents and sometimes it's tough to get adjusted, but uh, Coach McKeon was confident that they could make some changes here tonight and, and, and play much better. Yeah, he liked what he saw of his girls in practice and really thought they'd be committed here tonight. A steal by Romeo on the other end, blocked by Mashenko out of bounds. Good job getting back on defense there. Yeah, this is a Dakota team. It comes in top 10 in the state of Michigan, according to M Live. So arguably the favorites in what should really be a tough Mac Red Conference. And that's been a conference, Jason, that's been just absolutely brutal to win. You talk about Cousineau back in 2016, winning the state championship out of the Mac Red, a Gross Point North team that went 10-0 a season ago and eventually lost in the regional championship. So you know if you're winning the Mac Red, you're going up against some of the best competition in the state. Great hustle right there by Dina Moyer, diving at midcourt to get that ball, forcing the jump ball situation. Romeo has the arrow, but great hustle early on. And that's really kind of the MO of this Romeo Bulldog team. They like to turn you over, they like to trap, they like to get things done defensively. Nearly had an over and back there. Ella Berger applying tough defense, only a sophomore. Three pointer on the way is off the mark and unable, well, able to save it. Romeo keeps the possession. Great hustle that time by Natalie Nowak to keep the play alive and now she has a short little jumper off the mark. Here comes Dakota now in transition, Berger. Knocked away from behind, but she was fouled. And that's really what the Cougars want to get going. They want to use that speed to their advantage. They want to turn over Romeo and get going in transition, especially off some of those missed shots by the Bulldogs. Nearly two minutes gone here in this opening quarter, and Cameron Grant is still yet to touch the ball. So that's kind of shocking in its own right. Knocked out of bounds by Romeo. So Dakota has it underneath their own basket here. but. Dakota's going to have to get Cameron Grant involved and utilize that size like we anticipated. There she is right on cue. Goes off glass and knocks it down. So maybe Coach McCune heard me. Nearly comes away with a steal there at the midcourt stripe as well. On the floor, Amanda LeBlanc goes to the elbow there and a shove from behind. Mashenko with the foul. Second team foul against Dakota. Into the game for Romeo, Marissa Chipkevsky, her sister Mackenzie, both on the floor. And Mackenzie Chipkevsky coming off a 15 and five game in their win over Chippewa Valley. So Mackenzie of the two sisters has been known to fill it up. Cameron Grant playing the point guard, got locked up in the paint. All knocked out of bounds by Romeo. Fortunate for the Cougars are keeping the possession. Yeah, and terrific recognition that time by the Bulldogs to, to recognize that Cameron Grant was catching that ball at the free throw line. They quickly double teamed her and nearly turned over Dakota once again. So that's something Cameron Grant's going to see a lot of throughout the season. Double and triple teams are really going to limit her looks on the inside. Ella Berger, a nice quick first step. Gets to the rack, lays it in. I think Ella Berger, one of the players for this Dakota squad, that's really going to have a bright future. As you mentioned, only a sophomore this year and going to get some valuable minutes at that point guard position. And she's a playmaker for them offensively. Romeo looks inside of the post. Little turnaround, missed shot there. Some contact, but. Able to knock it down there, Natalie Nowak, Romeo on the board. A little bit of a mismatch that time. Ella Berger sagged down and had to take on Natalie Nowak. Nowak using her size that time to her advantage. Followed up her miss with a make. 
Bulldogs are finally on the scoreboard. Dakota's gonna have to avoid those switches because they've got some big bodies down low, but that time, like he's mentioned, Ella Berger got trapped. And Noak had the size advantage on her. But inbounds quickly to Cameron Grant. She couldn't catch it. Here comes Romeo now trying to get it under control. They move it cross court. Might have been a foot on the line. Let's see, official counts it as a three. Marissa Trivchevsky, good recognition that time to drag her foot back, made sure both puppies were behind the line that time, was able to knock down the three-pointer. And a loose ball, Dakota comes away, and now a foul from behind. Megan Doyle into the game for Romeo, just, or did they call a timeout? Like, no, they did call the foul, but we also got a timeout. Dakota wants to talk things over. Playing a little sloppy maybe here at the early going and down by a point. Coach McCune trying to get his girls to get going here. This was a Dakota team a season ago was the second highest scoring team in the Mac Red and already averaging you know, 59 points after that 59 point performance and their win over Berkeley. So it's a team that's gonna wanna get out and go and <laughs> we talked about a really a contrast in styles here tonight against a Romeo team that just really kind of wants to, to muck things up, so to speak, on the hardwood. Well, they're doing a good job thus far. They have a one-point lead. Dakota has the ball coming out of the timeout. It's a Romeo team that obviously lost a lot to graduation, but were 8-2 and two in Mac White play a season ago, which was good enough for the Mac White Championship, 14 and eight, their overall record a season ago. So it's a Romeo team that's accustomed to winning and really a good early season matchup here for Dakota. Berger inside the three point line, misses that shot, rebounded by Mackenzie Trzewski and here comes the Bulldogs. And swiped that time by Berger. Tries to dribble into a pack of red jerseys and those are the kind of things you know she'll get better at. You gotta recognize you got to kick that ball out right there. She caught it, found herself almost in the paint with five red jerseys right around her. Fortunate, though, they kept the possession. She'll and take a rest now. And a good job by Coach McCune. I'm sure he will quickly grab Ella Berger and give her some instruction there on what he wants her to do at the point position. Carly Moran comes in to check in for her. A little floater falls that time for Tamia Townsell. Townsend was a girl that got called up late last season from the JV squad to the varsity level and really contributed some valuable minutes down the stretch for the Cougars and player coach McCune was thrilled as nice he mentioned pass. her name in the preview show. Nice behind, no look pass by Moshenko to Tamiya Townsend who lays it in. That was all started by a rebound by Cameron Grant who threw it out ahead of everybody. And now a block with a foul. Boy, you heard a, a lot of ball there but the official says there was some arm. Cameron Grant just had a smile on her face. She thought she had a clean block that time. But Natalie Nowak at the line. Misses the front end. This Dakota team is deep, Brad. That's what Coach McCune talked about to us in the preview show we did uh, for the girls. Anticipating going about eight, nine, 10 deep maybe at times. And they're still extremely young. You look up and down this roster and you only see two seniors for Dakota. So they lose six players from a season ago to graduation. So a young team that has surprisingly a lot of varsity experience. Dina Moyer had the offensive board momentarily. Loose ball, now Romeo has it. Mazer thought about that three. She might have been wise to take it. Drive inside, the ball knocked away. Here comes Dakota now with it, Grant. And you can see that she's the focus. Look at all the red jerseys collapse on her. She goes up, lays it up. Misses it, kicks it out, Moshenko for three. That one off the mark. Put back and one for Tamiya Townsell. 
How about six points early on here in the first quarter for Townsville? Yeah, Townsville, one of those four Cougar players we mentioned that are over five foot ten, using that size and length to her advantage. And the Cougars really crashing the boards here early and using that size to their advantage. We talked about it throughout the start of this game, and it's coming through big time here for the Cougars. Misses the free throw, however. Romeo comes down with it, now looking to push things. A little bit out of control, though. Three-pointer on the way, Reagan Mazur misses. Offensive rebound by Megan Doyle. Dakota comes away now, looking to push. Missed shot that time by Carly Moran. Out of bounds, it'll be Dakota basketball. Regan Mazur had an opportunity there, perhaps, to take a charge down low, and she just wasn't able to set her feet in time, and Cougars will get a second chance opportunity on the ball, deflecting out of bounds, last touch by Romeo. Inside Grant draws a couple defenders, too far underneath, hits the bottom of the backboard. Now a scramble, we're gonna get a jump ball, and the possession arrow favors Dakota. No, well one official says Romeo, the other says Dakota. If I'm not mistaken, Brad, I thought Romeo had the last possession arrow. So it appears that the majority of the scoreboards here tonight aren't working, and <laughs> that includes the possession arrow. So they're going old school, <laughs> flip the card back and forth. and the, Even the scorekeepers aren't in mid-season form yet, so yeah, it's, it's early, early. on. <laughs> well, nonetheless, Romeo has the ball, looking to get it inside. It's knocked away. Get another foul here against Romeo. I mentioned Brooke Davidson was in the game for the Cougars. Also into the game, Jennifer, Jennifer Zaprawa, excuse me. And more, more of that size for Dakota. It's unbelievable. The amount of length that comes off that Cougar bench. Ooh, nice behind the back play by Cameron Grant. Moran fires for three and knocks it down. Well, that's what... Cameron Grant told us, she said, you know, I'm going to draw a lot of defenders inside, and when I kick it out, I'm going to have to rely a lot on those outside shooters to knock them down. And that's exactly what just happened on that last possession for Dakota. And yeah, some instant offense off the bench in the form of Carly Moran knocking down the triple try. 13-6 Dakota with the lead, a minute 15 left to go in the opening quarter. And it just goes to show the basketball IQ of Cameron Grant realizing that she's going to have to defer oftentimes offensively to her teammates, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a winning brand of basketball. Inside, that one knocked away by Townsville. Nice block. Dakota looking in transition. Lost control. That one was Moran. Now the other direction. Cameron Grant right there to block it, but it hit the baseline. About her third block shot already of the night. Reagan Mazur was in transition, and when she stopped, she realized she was going to have to get that one out over the outstretched arms of Cameron Grant and couldn't do it. Under a minute to go now in the quarter. Romeo will inbound from underneath their own basket. It's a tough spot on the floor to inbound. Nice job of the Bulldogs. They go into the post. Little handoff. Nice job. Cameron Grant got a hand on that one to block it. Two jerseys collapse on her and they foul her. Could be aggressive, but kind of a foolish foul that time. And That's gonna be the sixth team foul against Romeo. Using that out of bounds, side boundary is at sixth defender. That's where you like to trap the basketball. But Romeo committing the foul that far away from the basket. That's a big one. You mentioned six team fouls. So bonus basketball for the rest of the half for the Dakota Cougars. In the post, Romeo does a nice job bringing the double team, and they come up with a steal. Aubrey Kerwitz knocked it away. Good defense being played by Brooke Davidson out, out top. And Romeo looks to be holding for that final shot of the first quarter. Angela Perry now. Knocked away, Cameron Grant has it. They will not get a quality shot up as that thing goes out of bounds. And that's the end of the first quarter. Dakota with a 13-6 lead over Romeo. Stay with us. 
We'll be back in a few moments for the start of the second. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Jordan Peele. I'm usually trying way too hard to be funny. Well, right now I'm gonna be completely serious with you. Online bullying is a toxic side effect of modern technology. No one's immune to it. Not you, not me, nobody. But there's a way we can fix it. This emoji in the symbol section of your phone's emoji keyboard. Use it when you see bullying online to say, I see what you're doing, not cool, definitely not funny. And I know what funny is. I coined the phrase wordness to the turdness. So. Join me and become a witness. When you see bullying online, use this emoji to do something. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. And we're back here at Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burton, Brad Fetters, getting set for the start of the second quarter here between Dakota and Romeo. Varsity girls basketball. Dakota has the 13-6 lead. They have the ball to start. Tamia Townsville led the Cougars with six points in that opening quarter. She starts on the bench here, though, in the second. That's the luxury Coach McCune's got is he has a couple fresh bodies out on the floor right now for this Dakota squad, including Angela Petrovich, who starts the second quarter of play. So a jump ball situation. Romeo has it. And now right now, this is a complete second unit with Cameron Grant now on the bench as well. She played the entire first quarter. Marissa Toko into the game. Nice drive inside, taking advantage. <laughs> Is that kind of a Coach McCune trademark, the old five for five substitution? Yeah, we used to always joke about that, the old Arby's five for five. They used to do that substitution. Dakota turns it over, so the second unit here needs to kind of calm down. Full, full line changes for the Cougars. More importantly, though, the starting five getting quality rest here, and Dakota holding on to a lead. So. Ella Berger, the lone starter on the floor right now for Dakota. And She's a player we talked about briefly in that first quarter of play, but she's a terrific offensive threat for them and had multiple 20-point-plus games last season. Full-court press now being brought by the Bulldogs. Dakota gets it over half court, and dangerous pass is out of bounds, a turnover once again. Petrovic tried to shoot that ball down the other direction, and it was out of bounds. So how would you compare this Romeo squad maybe to like a Syracuse in college basketball? <laughs> a team that gives you multiple looks defensively, especially the zone defense. Yeah. Syracuse and Shaka Smart maybe at uh, Texas with the full court pressure defense. Well, Coach McCune referenced it and said, you know, he's watching the JV game. They like to do a lot of, uh, you know, one three one zones and kind of change things up. Dangerous looking play yeah, there. It looked like Ella, or excuse me, Marissa, Marissa Toko. Marissa Toko sure did hit the back what? of her head. She came down hard. She, luckily for that ponytail, it might have saved her. <laughs> She's up and she seems to be okay. 6.20 left to go in the half. Toko family out in full support here tonight. Yeah, Mark Toko graduated last year, played both football and basketball here at Dakota that is here tonight. And we're going to get a turnover here. That bucket will not count. Is going to get an offensive foul there against the Cougars. So Romeo hanging tough here. Coach Greg Bauer in attendance as well. Hugging that sideline was Berger. Did a nice job, just couldn't keep that momentum in bounds. Here comes the substitutions now in full force. The starters, Mashenko and Moyer and Cameron Grant and uh, Townsville all check back into the game. So the complete starting five out there now for Dakota. Inside the post that time, Nowak looking for help. Going to get a foul reach in against Dakota. Second against Townsville. Only a fourth team foul against Dakota. So a couple more to give. We mentioned all the way back in the first quarter, Romeo's got those six team fouls, and that's going to count. Quick inbound to Natalie Nowak. She got that one to fall, and 
was shoved from behind, so she'll look to complete the three-point play. Get Romeo back maybe within two. And Romeo just kind of hanging around, aren't they? Romeo is accustomed to playing Mac Red basketball. He played up in the red for several seasons. Kind of used to the that grind, and now they play out of the white, but these crossover games still feel like a Mac Red game, don't they? Yeah, this defensive Romeo just giving Dakota nice. fits here. Nice There's pick, a good charge. Nice pickpocket. It, not a foul, but they're gonna just simply give Romeo the basketball as Berger lost it out of bounds. That was Mackenzie Tripchevsky planted her feet right at that midcourt stripe and was anticipating the charge, took it. Ball skipped out of bounds rather than the charge call. Missouri puts it on the floor baseline, kicks it out. Stolen by Berger, now in transition. Looking to maybe take it all the way. Contact and one. Beautiful finish by Ella Berger. Put her head down, she knew what she wanted to do right away. You kind of get the feeling that Romeo is doing exactly what they want to do here tonight. It's just those little things, those little execution plays, especially offensively, that they haven't been able to capitalize here. And that's why they trail by four points with 523 remaining in the first half. Foul shot in and out. Dina Moyer, though, with the rebound. Grant has it in the post, shakes her defender, floats one, misses. Moyer had it again for a moment. Romeo comes away. In transition now. Mazur pulls up, fires, misses. As it pops off the back iron, now here comes Berger again in transition. Puts on the brakes, goes up, misses. Back and forth we go. Dangerous pass. And now Berger picks off that one. Ill-advised. Cameron Grant, little head fake, drives inside, contact there. She'll go to the line. Boy, fast-paced action on both sides. Neither team really to <laughs> get some cohesiveness on the offensive side, but. And Romeo's got a value possession of the basketball a little bit better that time. The stretch outlet pass intercepted and <laughs> Bulldogs need to limit those turnovers. Cameron Grant at the line after hitting the first, looking for her fourth point. In and out, unable to get it. That ball out of bounds. They're going to say it went off of Dina Moyer. So Romeo has it. 4.48 left. Now the Cougars are going to give the Bulldogs a little taste of their own medicine that time. Turnover as that inbound pass picked off. And Moshenko knocks down a three, makes them pay. Romeo needing a timeout, and they're going to get it. Those are those plays you mentioned, Brad. I mean, just a bad pass, and Ella Berger picked it off at midcourt and found Mashenko wide open for a three-pointer, and they can hit those outside shots. So eight-point lead now, the largest of the game for Dakota. And Romeo of all teams should know how to break a full-court press as they practice it, I'm sure, every single day. And those diagonal passes is exactly what you want. They ran it well. They just did not execute it. And it led to another turnover right at the half court line in an easy three point bucket as the Cougars have edged ahead now by eight points, one of their largest leads of the night. And really, you can't give the Cougars an inch because they'll take a mile, especially offensively. This is a team that can score points in a hurry. And, and Romeo, it was going to be an uphill climb, you thought, here tonight, just in terms of size and, and just maybe capabilities. And execution has to be better. Well, they were able to beat it that time, just unable to capitalize underneath. A little rush on that shot. Ella Berger fires and hits another three-pointer. And boy, when those floodgates open, they can open fast. And Ella Berger with another steal. Oh, over and back. Over and back, yeah. She <laughs> didn't realize where she was and flipped it back to Dina Moyer. Great effort, but just got to be aware of that mid-court stripe. Three-point shot really has kind of become the norm now, and, and especially in the NBA game, but you're seeing it trickle down to the college. In fact, the college game, they've moved the three-point line back a little bit further because so many teams have just really capitalized on that three-point line, and it's a Dakota team that can really knock down their threes as well, and it's a difference maker. Another steal by Berger. Boy, she's got a bunch of them here in the first half. Lays that one in. 
Wheels She's got nine points, seven here in the second quarter. Wheels are really starting to fall off now for Romeo as it's trapping defense for the Cougars. Looks really good. Drop off Mashenko, baseline jumper hits. Floodgates have opened up. Yeah, they sure have now. And Cougars couldn't buy a bucket in the first quarter and have just come out of blazing here in the second frame. Romeo trying to find a way to end nice this run. And there. They do get underneath the defense that time. And Natalie Nowak with the terrific bounce pass. That's Trusevsky. fundamental basketball there. Marissa Trusevsky, the benefactor, gets the bucket underneath. And Good spacing by Dakota. They're going to get Cameron Grant for steps. Cameron Grant questioning that call, but whistled for the travel. And don't forget Cameron Grant missed a large portion of last season with an injury, and this was a streaky Dakota team. They had a six-game losing streak in the middle of the season when Grant went down and then won six of their last seven to kind of end the season last year. And are hoping to really carry some of that momentum into play this year. Put back, no good. Romeo gets a couple cracks on the offensive glass, and now Dakota's going to have numbers the other way. Mashenko, a little floater, hits that one. A little cherry picking on the other end with uh, everybody down low, Mashenko. That's the definition of a uh, knockdown shooter, right? Mashenko <laughs> just planted her feet, caught the ball, and hoisted up the shot. She didn't even need any sort of momentum towards the basket. Nope, she just took it and flipped it up, and it went. So three-pointer on the way here for Romeo off the mark. Caught, though. Second chance. How about a third chance underneath? Mackenzie Trzewski. And Cougars caught napping just a little bit there. Oh. Nobody wanted to crash the boards, and everybody was looking at the basket, and there was two Bulldogs down low, and it was an easy bucket there for Romeo who was in desperate need of some offense. That was uh, Lola Rahal, excuse me, on that last bucket. She had checked into the game down low. Ooh. Grant, little finger roll, but going to get called for a travel again. Coach McCune disagrees as well. That little, what they call a Euro step move Cameron Grant's used there and able to split defenders a couple times, yeah. but that referee on the far side is signaled twice for traveling violations. And even Grant disagreed with that call. I mean, she looked over there and said, you got to be kidding me, that was not a travel. But nonetheless, Romeo has it with a 13-point deficit from the foul line. Turnaround jumper off the back iron. Dina Moyer with a tough rebound all the way down the court. Nobody there. Ella Berger will just lay it up, miss it. Put back misses. How about a third chance? Mashenko's fouled. Boy, nobody there. They couldn't capitalize, but Mashenko on the third opportunity will go to the line after being fouled. Dakota that time just uh, padding the, the uh, rebounding stats. How about Jamie Mashenko? Eight points all here in the second quarter. And yeah, really smooth delivery. Like the rotation off the hand, five foot six, junior guard for Coach McCune and this Cougar team. We mentioned a lot of underclassmen. This is a team that's going to be good this year, but might be even better next year. Romeo a little bit out of control, jump shot off the mark. Romeo with another opportunity inside drop off. That one blocked by Grant out of bounds. Lola Rahal thought she might have gotten an easy bucket, but from behind there, Grant got a hand on it. That's why it's so tough in the paint. I mean, other teams are going to, you know, really be prevented those inside easy buckets between Dina Moyer and Cameron Grant. Tough to get shots up in the paint. And yeah, nothing's been easy offensively here for Romeo tonight in these offensive sets. Another one there that might have been deflected. Grant grabs that rebound. Dribbles out of everybody, now up ahead. Pass picked off. Oh boy. And another one picked off, Carly Moran. Now she tries to go up ahead. Things need to maybe settle down for both teams. You kind of get the sense that Romeo at times in these half court sets have kind of rushed their shots because of the difference. And Cameron Grant able to block shots. They're maybe hoisting up shots a little bit earlier than they wanted to, not quite set exactly. Looking to hopefully maybe trim this lead under double digits, but yeah, under 14 a point to, deficits a under, lot. 
Excuse me, Brad. Yeah, under a minute to go here. Romeo misses the three, gets another opportunity. Grant with a rebound. Holds on to it this time, dribbles it up court. Nice behind the back dribble, stops at the elbow, floats one up, misses. Tries to get her own rebound. And now we're gonna get a foul. Grant maybe a little too aggressive trying to get it back. Is that what they're gonna, the officials come together, what'd they call? Officials call double, double technical. They're gonna call a technical foul against Natalie Nowak of Romeo. Maybe she said something after Grant fell to the floor, not sure, but Cameron Grant at the line for the technical. Yeah, that's perhaps a push there, yeah, like that flagrant. little flagrant foul push. Didn't look too egregious, but clearly the official thought that it was dangerous enough to call a technical foul, but the Ball don't lie, maybe perhaps. Uh, two misses at the free throw line for Grant. Dakota will have the possession. 25 seconds to go. We wonder if they're, they'll hold for one final shot. Hannah Tatant checks in with the face shield for Dakota. Got that Rip Hamilton look going tonight. <laughs> I guess Rip Hamilton is kind of on the fringe of this generation, right? They might know who he is. <laughs> you and I know, yeah. You and I remember how many games he played with that face shield, even if after he didn't have to wear right. it. Just got used to wearing it and said, I'm not going to change things. A steal by Romeo here with 13 seconds left, trying to drop it off in transition. Got seven seconds. Looking underneath, little floater, no good. Let's see if Dakota can get a shot up. They will not. That would not have counted, and that's the way the first half comes to a close. Dakota leads at 29-15. Brad, your thoughts on the first half of play? I think really Dakota, the, the, for them, it was their depth, right? You're getting a bunch of different players scoring points, and for Romeo, it's getting to those fundamentals. Clearly, they want to trap, they want to apply that full court pressure and turn Dakota over. And getting it going offensively is going to be the biggest uphill climb here tonight. We'll see if the Bulldogs can get it done in the second half. Stay with us. We'll be back in a few moments. 29-15, our score. There's just one place where students are students first. And athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Macomb County, 27 cities, townships, and villages. From East Point to Memphis, Romeo to New Baltimore. 458 square miles of where you want to be. It's a place where your children can grow, and so can your business. Macomb County's tree-lined borders contain over 12,000 acres of parkland. Its outer ridge, 31 miles of freshwater shoreline, both filled each year with countless concerts, festivals, and family reunions. It's the birthplace of advanced technologies that not only instruct future generations, but protect them. Hey, and those are just facts. You can get that from the internet or a book. No. To truly understand what Macomb County is all about, you need to experience it. You need to live here. You need to work here. When you do that, you'll know you're home. And 
we're back here at Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Byrne and Brad Fetters getting set for the start of the second half here between Dakota and Romeo, varsity girls basketball. Dakota has the 29-15 lead as we start the third, and they were led, Brad, by Ella Berger and Jamie Mashenko, who had big second quarters. Yeah, some of role players are getting the job done for Dakota. You look at Cameron Grant with only three first half points and some of the secondary scoring. It's really led the way here tonight for Dakota. Tamiya Townsell also chipping in with six points in the first half. Mashenko in transition, that ball knocked away. Here comes Romeo now, one on one the other way. Little up and under there, Amanda LeBlanc tried to get around Ella Burr, couldn't do it. And now we're gonna get a jump ball. Possession arrow favors Dakota. Dakota came out sloppy to start this game, really settled down in that second quarter. We mentioned it a couple times, the floodgates kind of opened and they went on a long scoring run. Yeah, they had one really good streak of about four straight possessions and that was that lady right there, Jamie Mashenko. And kind of led the charge in that second quarter of play. She knocked down a couple really nice looking jumpers and fills it up there. Well, they called it a two. It looked like she might have been beyond the arc, but they must have said she had a foot on the line. <laughs> Referees can't go to the replay review yeah. here tonight. Uh, either way, it's a, a long two pointer for Mashenko and a 31 15 lead now. Mashenko, one of the young ladies you interviewed for the girls' preview show here on McCollum Township Government Access. Key contributor this year for a young Cougar squad. Romeo cut off baseline. Oh, they're going to get a blocking foul against Dina Moyer. Shuffled her feet just a little bit trying to cut off that baseline. Couldn't do it. Just over a minute gone here in the third. Romeo inbounding from underneath their own basket. Oh, telegraph that pass. And Berger comes away with another steal. She's got a bunch of them. Knocked out of bounds. Dakota will keep the possession, but what about Ella Berger? Really just fast getting to the ball and coming up with a bunch of steals here tonight. And difference maker offensively and defensively running the point position. Kind of that off guard in some of these half court sets along with Mashenko. Out of bounds. Coach McCune shouting out orders to the girls to run the play. That pass over the outstretched arms of Cameron Grant, so you know it must have been high. A little bit of a frustrating night. It got a little bit away with a little bit of a kickball there. Ella Berger up, misses, but she was fouled. Nice job getting control of that one and not traveling with it, but she'll go to the line looking for two. I mentioned a little bit of a frustrating night for Cameron Grant. Every try, I mean, they try to feed her in the post. The pass has been too high, too low. She hasn't been able to get it going offensively here tonight. Foul shot in and out, and you know, Dakota's got a lead, but that's one of the things we can look at right now is they've missed a bunch of free throws. Knocks down the second. Romeo's got to get something going offensively. Stuck on 15. I've been stuck on 15 for quite a while. Look into the post. Moyer playing good defense and help comes across that time. Townsville, and now we're going to get a jump ball. Possession arrow will favor Romeo, but that scrappy defense, that pack mentality, really, it's like that ball goes into the post and you had three white jerseys all over her. Another knock away. Dakota's done a nice job playing the passing lanes. Little floating jump shot misses. It'll be off Romeo, out of bounds. And that was a really nice defensive set there for Dakota. You talked about it, and it's worth mentioning again. They really are quick to the basketball as we get a near trap there as well. Dakota able to beat the press. Berger 
Floats one over to Moyer. Cameron Grant beyond the three-point line. She'll set, fire, miss. Ball comes down to Romeo. Here they come in transition now. Dropping it off that time to Missouri. Not a quality shot. Ball on the floor. Romeo, another crack at it. Nowak misses. The Cougars not, might not be blocking shots, but they're altering shots, and they're, they're making Romeo speed up offensively, and they're just not getting those good looks. Right there, a case in point. Cameron Grant gets back, puts a hand up, and alters that shot. She didn't block it, but she altered it. It's tough, and we mentioned it off the top that that's a big advantage in tonight's game, and quite frankly, going to be an advantage in most games. Dakota, with that size, you can Cameron Grant and, and uh, Dina Moyer, you can see them down in the paint, two tallest players on the court. <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of get the sense that the Bulldogs are panicking, right? They hear footsteps, especially inside, rushing and rush the pass there, and that's going to be an easy lay-in, perhaps. <laughs> well, how about another steal and a drop-off? Contact there, no call, but Berger had one in transition, couldn't capitalize. And, but, boy, she's got to be approaching double digits and steals just in this game alone. And now we're going to get a timeout, full timeout from Romeo. 32-15 our score, 454 left to go in the third quarter. And Romeo has yet to score here through three minutes plus of action in the third quarter. I got to get something going offensively. Dakota, even when they play sloppy like this, they still got the enough talent, it seems, at times to just get them through, but you can't rely on that. Yeah, they can overcome some of their mistakes just on talent alone, but once you get into that grind of the Mac Red, you're going to have to limit some of those mistakes if you want to compete from another Mac Red championship. And this is the Dakota team. You look at it last year, 12-9, and 3-7 and seven in the Mac Red. And obviously we talked about Cameron Grant going down with an injury. You kind of just think that was a little bit of a blip on the overall scheme of things, just kind of a abnormality perhaps for this Cougar team and just a season to forget about because you go back a couple seasons ago, the 2016-17 team, they go 19-7. and seven. They win a district and regional championship. 2017-18, they go 19-4. and four. They're district champs, red champs, Mac Red White Tournament champs, the Macomb County Team of the Year. So this is a Cougar team that's a perennial power not only in the Mac Red, but in all of Macomb County. Off the inbound, a little up and under miss that time, but a foul. The Kenzie Trzewski goes to the line. Contrast in shoe styles as well. This uh, Romeo team comes out with mainly black and gray shoes, and Dakota squad's got purple and pinks and greens and So the goose egg is gone here in the third quarter for Romeo as Trusevsky knocks down the first free throw. Now is that something you would rock, the bright green and, and pink shoes, I'm Jason? I'm not sure I would do that, go that far. Press once again, Cameron Grant up ahead, Moyer hands it off. Berger fires, misses, ball comes down, loose. Moyer gets it back, goes up strong. No, they're going to call her for a travel. Boy, you could see when she got it, she was upset and wanted to go up and try to get a bucket, but they called her for a travel. Going back to the uniform discussion, I think I would go full accessories. I'd probably go elbow pads. I would definitely wear the headband. Uh, play, playing in Mac Red, whether it's boys or girls basketball, I think you'd want to put on knee pads and <laughs> an elbow thigh, pad or elbow, two. <laughs> thigh pads. I mean, you just put on a football uniform, basically. Especially we've, seen, we've seen some physical games, boy, and it, it's not just from the boys; it's from the girls' teams too, man. Sometimes you can get some really physical confrontations. I've already seen Dina Moyer go down and get a nice uh, floor burn on that loose ball at center court. She could have probably. Used the elbow and knee pad or two. Romeo at the line. A first is a miss. Reese Carmody gets one more. Teams have really gone away from the team shoe, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wears black and white Nikes. Berger baseline. Little up and under misses. 
Romeo comes away. Knock away by Grant. Romeo tried to save it. Oh, nice drop off pass Ooh, to Berger. Too. You can hear it all the way up here. Collisions. It'll be Dakota basketball, but Cougars now a little bit of a cold streak here. Can't get any of these buckets to fall. And after a foul fest in that first half, referees have let a lot go on here in the second half as this game really has gotten sloppy. Marissa Toko checks in for the Cougars. As does number four, Serena Palashai. Moyer in the pose, goes up strong and knocks it down. That was a tough shot. Yeah, worked herself through a double team that time and able to hoist up that shot somehow. And then on this end gets a rebound. Dakota maybe looking to push things. Brooke Davidson controlling Lots. things out top. Lots of one and dones offensively for Romeo, and that's that Dakota size. Tough luck miss there. Toko misses. Palshai has it. A little lazy on that pass, though, yeah. and it was knocked out of bounds. Dakota needs to be a little crisper now. And we saw this in the first half when the second unit came in. You kind of saw a little bit of a drop off, and that's maybe a little inexperience from a lot of these girls. And they're going to have to get more experience if they want to go far and use that depth later on in the Mac Red season. And, and Coach McCune making sure he's got a couple of his starters out there, none bigger than Cameron Grant working her way through. Slicing and dicing and underneath. Shot on this end, misses over the head of Moyers. She went up to try to grab that rebound. Grant grabs it. Up ahead to Toko. Open, Davidson fires, misses. Palshai tries to save it. She does to Grant in the paint. Oh. Nice drop step. How about, oh. She was upset and it was called a travel. The gym didn't like it, Grant didn't like it. She's gotta be careful, she might get teed up. <laughs> Coach McCune wasn't happy either. That's Very vocal. Same official now has got her for the third time tonight for a travel move and she kind of spun and carried the basketball up and over to the defender and got her for steps. And now we're gonna get a jump ball and the possession arrow will favor Dakota. So the Cougars defense forces a turnover once again. You can see some frustration on Cameron Grant's face. Yeah, she's three hit a times tough night. now. Yeah, she's had a tough night tonight. She knows she's got to be the focus of everybody, but still, Moyer from the post got fouled. And that's a big advantage for the Cougars when they can have Cameron Grant outside the three-point line and they can go back into the post to Moyer, and she's got a nice drop step move. And they had to foul her to stop her. Miss at the first free throw. 244 to go in the third. Yeah, Cameron Grant really running hot right now on the Dakota bench, urging her to calm down just a little bit. Well, I mentioned that Dakota is struggling offensively here in the third quarter, and this ball is like a pinball right now. We're going to get a foul against Romeo, but Dakota with only seven points scored here in the third quarter, and Romeo only has two. So it's a struggle right now for both sides to find some points. Toko fires from the outside, misses. Rebounded by number 22, Aubrey Karowitz. Romeo has it now, approaching two minutes to go in the third. High pass out of bounds. Nearly caught by the official, but Dakota will take over. So really not a lot of time for this Dakota team to kind of hit their stride. Their next game is going to be a road game against Chippewa Valley, and then guess what? It's all of a sudden league play, and Cameron Grant, she can't believe that she didn't get a Foul call there. And a lay-in by Missouri. And now it looks like we're going to get a stoppage. And I think more of a more of our sarcastic look 
coming from Cameron Grant as she's furious that she didn't get that call, but she's getting called for a bunch of traveling violations. So, And Megan Doyle of Romeo, as the play was going on, was reaching down in an effort to help Cameron Grant get to her feet, and Grant's going to go straight to the locker room. I think that's more frustration. She was walking okay, just more of a, a floor burn, but I think it was just more frustration that she didn't get a call, and Romeo was able to get an easy bucket. Now here on the other end, in transition, and one. Reagan Mazur, four straight points for her, and now she'll look to complete the three-point play. And just like that, Dakota loses Cameron Grant, and Romeo gets four straight points, looking for maybe five at the line, but Dakota's gonna talk things over now. Coach McHugh needs to calm the girls down. Right now you could just see the frustration in the, from the Dakota sideline. So as Cameron Grant was going down, I kind of mentioned the next game on the road against Chippewa Valley, and then it's right in the league play, and you're going to take on probably, arguably, the other top contender in the MAC Red, and that will be Gross Point North, and that game will take place right here at Dakota. So a nice early season matchup between favorites in the MAC Red, Dakota Gross Point North. And North has been a team that Dakota has struggled with the last several seasons. And, and everybody has. Uh, everybody has, but I mean, they just, they, a couple times they got close and just couldn't get over the hump and find a W, but those games obviously mean much more. And you mentioned the Chippewa Valley game, even though, you know, Chippewa Valley plays out of the MAC Blue this year, it's still the school district rival. and. You're always going to get up for a game against your school district rival in, in the Big Reds. And that Dakota Gross Point North game is a game we're going to have right here on Macomb Township Government Access. So looking forward already to call on that one. A couple uh, miss, excuse me, at the line. Couldn't complete the three-point play out of that timeout. So Dakota has it now up by 15 in the post now. Pass goes to Prowa. Now another foul against Romeo and the entire bench stands up in almost a sarcastic cheer that the <laughs> officials called a foul. Lola Rahal picks up the foul there. Dina Moyer at the line. Knocks down the first. No sign of Cameron Grant yet on that Dakota bench. Well, if it ends up being something a little more serious, that could be interesting, but it looked like she walked off and with a skin knee, more like just taking care of that and trying to calm her down maybe a little bit as she was definitely frustrated when she left. Coming up on a minute to go here in the third quarter, Romeo really not able to get it within 15 points. That jumper off the mark, offensive rebound. Another opportunity inside, cutting inside was Megan Doyle. Got tripped up. That's the sixth team foul against Dakota. But it was a shooting foul, so at the line was Doyle. Uh, perhaps that could be a strategy moving forward for the Bulldogs is try to get to the line, stop the clock, get some easy points there. Knock down a three would be huge. Three-pointer from the outside that time, Mackenzie Trusevsky. Another turnover here, perhaps. Ooh, nope. ooh, ooh, close. Dakota keeps it, but trusevsky has got seven points, five of those here in the third. Romeo, a little offensive spurt perhaps to finish this quarter. Toko up ahead. Nice trap. Zaprawa lost it. It's a battle for it over there. Now both Who teams. Wants it? And now trip. we're gonna reach in foul as Zaprawa tried to get it back. And again, Brad, this is the second unit and the second unit getting a lot of playing time. I'm sure Coach McKeon wants to let them finish out this quarter and let the starters come back early in the fourth.
It's a bonus here now for Romeo. Yeah, you so mentioned <laughs> seventh team foul in Dakota, so a one in one situation here for Romeo. Karowitz misses the first. Dina Moyer with the rebound. So Dakota dodges that bullet. Here they come now. Davidson up ahead to Toko. Dangerous pass, and it goes all the way over to the Dakota bench. Kind of threw it to nobody that time. A lot, of bull, a lot of teachable moments in this basketball game for both coaching staffs, especially Coach McCune. He's, he knows the importance of this little stretch of basketball prior to the holiday break. And going to have to clean things up to get the job done against a team like Rose Point North. A little more jump in their step now. Romeo from just outside the foul line. That shot off the mark. 10 seconds to go. Let's see if Dakota can get a quality shot up. They got to move. Trapped in the backcourt. They have to get over the timeline. And now we're going to get a foul against Romeo. Boy. With a second left on the clock. It's going to be the fifth team foul. Now, obviously, they got something to give, but these roll over to the fourth. Man, foul 30 feet away is not one you want to take there. Moyer catches and hits. Dina Moyer catches at a second to go. Was able to hit the turnaround jumper, and Dakota ends on a positive mark. 40 to 24, our score. Stay with us. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter. I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. And we're back in set for the fourth and final quarter here on Macomb Township Government Access. Jason Burnt along with Brad Fetters. Dakota and Romeo Varsity Girls Basketball. The Bulldogs have it to start, but they're down big. Three-pointer from the corner, off the mark. Ella Berger back on the court. Along with a few of the other starters. Cameron Grant still missing. Berger hits the knockdown, the outside jumper rather, from just inside the uh, three-point line. And dangerous time in this game, already down 18 points. Romeo looking across the court and the Cougars got their starting five basically back out on the floor and Ella Berger taking over now. Ella Berger with the first two buckets here of the fourth quarter and it's a 20 point advantage for Dakota. A drive inside, slowed up. Good interior defense that time and now a knock away. Ball bouncing around, Berger comes away. Over to Townsville who lays it in. 6-0 run to start the quarter. This starting unit got an extended stay on the bench throughout the end of that third quarter and perhaps a message sent by Coach McCune. Message sent, message delivered, message received. The Cougars come out guns blazing here in this fourth quarter. And a unit that looks like uh, world beaters at the moment. Another knock away. Dakota comes away with another steal. Berger looks to drop it off to Mashenko. It was attempted to be saved that time. Out of bounds though, Dakota will have it. Good effort that time by Marissa Trusavsky. Just couldn't keep it in bounds. Ella Berger tripped up, blocking foul now against Romeo. That'll be the sixth team foul. Still no sign of Cameron Grant from the locker room. You just hope it's not something more serious than we anticipated. Moyer, a little turnaround in the lane, misses, but she was fouled. Dina, Mo Dina Moyer practices that little drop step. They, you see them in practice doing that. And during warm up, she was taking a lot of those drop step. Uh, practice uh, moves. Yeah, the, f the footwork of the post position is so valuable in, in terms of uh, spinning your defender out of the way and those drop steps to create that separation and 
to put the work in in practice in order to have it pay off for you when it matters the most. And really a nice effort here out of Dina Moyer, especially in the second half. She's got nine points, and like you mentioned, all in the second half. So this Dakota team can burn you in a lot of different ways, and they can do it fast. Outside jumper that time, misses everything, trying to save it, and they do. Romeo, another opportunity, but a hard trap on that far side. We're gonna get a timeout from the bench. Another full timeout for the Bulldogs. Kathy Bushiers saw that, that trap over there and called it from her position. So with 6.15 left to go in the ball game, Dakota has the 48-24 lead, and seemingly would have to be somewhat of a miracle here for Romeo if they want to try to get back into it with this little much time left on the clock. And the Bulldogs have been doubled up officially now with 6.15 remaining and Romeo playing out of that Mac White. We mentioned they were league champions a season ago. Going to have to compete with the likes of Utica, Port Huron, Sterling Heights Stevenson, Sterling Heights High and Henry Ford, the second. Yeah, and to be honest, I mean, Romeo's had some very competitive teams, but playing out of the white is probably where they need to be. You know, some teams you could say, oh, they need to, they need to come up, maybe play in the higher up league, but you, know, you look at a team like Warren Cusno, and you know, has not started off well this year, and they've been a powerhouse in the MAC Red, yep. but they might be going downward as far as their direction. Outside three-pointer from way downtown. Reagan, Missouri knocks it down. Yeah, that's the funniest thing about high school athletics is one, one senior class can really make the difference. And once those players graduate, then it's like a whole new rebuilding process. A jump ball, possession arrow favors Dakota. Just certain programs where it seems that that, that, that tradition doesn't graduate. And for the girls basketball program here at Dakota, I guess you could kind of say that as they've been perennial powers. The, the boys basketball team here at Dakota has been good for a, a long stretch of the time. Moyer goes, goes cross court to Mashenko, fires for three, comes down to Moyer. Now Ella Berger takes a dribble, fires, misses. Rebound at that time by number 21, Mackenzie Trubsevsky. Romeo's got a brand new gym that they broke in recently. So the athletic facility at Romeo, top notch now, brand new football stadium and a brand new gym. Now what do we got? Romeo player got hit away, away from the ball. Took an inadvertent elbow, maybe. The official stopped play, maybe anticipating there might be a bloody nose or something, and looks like she is going to come out of the game. That's number four, Reese Carmody. <laughs> and you and I know any hit to the nose area results in instant oh. tears, and it might have been the instant there. It doesn't matter how tough you are. When you get hit with either a basketball or an elbow to the nose, bridge of the nose, yep. oh, boy, does that hurt. Yeah, your eyes begin to water instantly. And a blocking foul against Dakota, so going to the line now, Marissa Trusevsky. Coming up on five minutes to play here in the ball game. The boys basketball teams throughout Macomb County kick off tonight. Miss on that second foul shot and a second opportunity for Romeo. And then now we're going to get a foul as they try to get it back for a third chance. But yeah, it's a fun time of year, Brad. You got the girls that, you know, about a week ahead they started games and now the boys getting going. And you see a lot of double ups throughout the year. The girls will play a game maybe at like 5 o'clock, 5.30, and then the boys will play a 7 o'clock contest. And good night of basketball if you're a fan. In the penalty now, Dina Moyer goes to the line, knocks down the front end of a one and one. And if you're a basketball fan and in and around Macomb Township, 
this Dakota, Dakota team, both in terms of boys and girls team, be a team to watch, and you'll see a lot of their games right here at Macomb Township Government Access. And a lot of these games all the way up through February, but it's usually early February now that the, they play MAC tournaments. Yeah, and I, I really like that. I like those crossover games at the end of the season because it puts you in that kind of frame of mind, that one-and-done tournament style of basketball, and you're seeing a lot of late season good matchups between some of those Mac White and Red schools. Ella Berger up ahead of the pack, and good defense caused that. 15 points tonight for Ella Berger, and another steal, and, when, and another Romeo foul. And Cameron Grant comes back from the locker room. She seems to be walking okay. And to be honest, doesn't look like she's bandaged up at all on her knees, so that must have just been a uh, a cool down timeout moment. Miss on the front end of a one on one burger. Nice post move. Hit the baseline, though, out of bounds. It'll be Dakota basketball. It was blocked partially. 52 28 our score. Moyer sets herself for three, misses. Don't often see her shooting from that far out, but they gave it to her, why not? Well, all seriousness, it's good to see Cameron Grant back. She's not a serious injury or anything like that. And don't need her necessarily with four minutes left to go in the game to come back in this one, but they're going to need her big time. That's yeah, a Dakota team that could make a lot of noise. They got eliminated very early in the MHSA playoffs a season ago, a first round exit to Port here on Northern. So this is a Dakota team that's going to have that sour taste in their mouth from a season ago and really could make a lot of noise, not only in league play, but I think it's a team that could make a long postseason run as well. Four fresh substitutions in for Dakota. Carly Moran back in. We'll keep you updated as the play continues here. Serena Palshai into the game as well. Mashenko, the only starter on the floor. A little two, three look defensively there for Dakota. Hannah Tutat got called for that foul. And you know, Brad, I made reference to the Richard Hamilton face shield earlier on, but if you notice, she's also wearing number 32. Ah. So another coincidence, if people remember Rip Richard Hamilton, I know you made the joke that maybe the next generation might not remember <laughs> Rip, but. Well, they won their championship back in 04. So let's see, that was 15 years ago. Gosh, has it been that long? And time flies. Nice drop off pass, but there's gonna be no basket yeah, there's some sophomores on this <laughs> roster that were probably just born. A timeout was called midway through that play, so that bucket did not count. You're looking up Rip Hamilton right now on YouTube. Well, I, we, we recommend uh, the young viewers to Google search Richard Hamilton. Boy, he was a good player, though. I mean, he was just was. fundamentally sound and good outside shooter. and Those well, he curls. Was, he could... He would never stop running, and that was the yeah. one thing that made him better than everybody else is he would just keep moving. They'd find him. He could stop on a dime and hit that mid-range jump shot and part of that 04 championship run. And kind of like a Jamie Moshenko. Out very there. similar if you're going to make that comparison, yeah. Moshenko will inbound this thing now. And he kind of patterned, Rip Hamilton kind of patterned his game after Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller, another guy that could just absolutely drain buckets on you. If you're going to shadow somebody and try to play like, you know, obviously Reggie Miller, Richard Hamilton, a couple names we mentioned. Another foul against Romeo, so we've really kind of slowed things down here at the end of the game. Reggie Miller single-handedly ruined Spike Lee and the New York Knicks <laughs> night one, uh, one time in the playoffs. I think he like ripped off 15 straight points or something at one time. And he knocked down three triples in a matter of, what was it, 15 seconds or something like that? Yeah. Another moment you guys can 
YouTube at home. Jamie Mashenko with a nice game tonight, 12 points. Really spread out. Dakota has had several girls with just quality performances led by Ella Berger. Yeah, Berger sophomore, Moshenko a junior. Moran for three, knocks it down. Second triple of the night gives her six points. Second chance opportunity for Romeo and a foul on this end. Lola Ray Hall will go to the line. That's yes, the Dakota team that really is going to score a lot of points this season. That's just their ability to knock down open looks, especially from behind the arc, is a team that's going to be reckoned with uh, throughout the season. I mean, you look at it, you know, Cameron Grant, a down night, only five points for her. Obviously not the benefit of a lot of calls, but, you know, there's going to be nights that she's going to score nearly 25, 20, 25, 20, points, 25 yeah. points, and it's other people that aren't going to be on the score sheet. And tonight was one of those nights where she was a little bit off, and, you, you know, Ella Berger picked up the slack. Jamie Mashenko, Carly Moran with a couple of big triples. You know, uh, uh, Tamia Townsville had a nice night with eight points. Dina Moyer had a big second half. She's got 10 points, so. Cameron Grant's just the walking double-double, right? Before she went down with injury a season ago, she was averaging 15 and 10. So you plug her in for that average 15, 20 points per game, and you have all the secondary scoring. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun team to watch progress throughout the season. They're only going to get better, Jason. Yeah, these early season games, you see a lot of rust. You see a lot of yeah, oh yeah. just trying to work out the kinks. And by the time they get past the holiday break into the new year, you're going to see a more fluent team. And I, I'm sure they'll they'll be a tough battle. And they were really night. saying all the right things as well in that season preview show that you shot here at Dakota. They talked about togetherness and, and playing as a unit and as a team. And if you got the players that are buying into that, and it seems like they're having a lot of fun, especially over on that bench right now, it's uh, – it could be in store for a lot of special things this year. Seven different scores now for Dakota in this ball game as Hannah Tutant at the line, knocked down the first. Misses the second, comes down, rebounded by Romeo. I think the coolest thing too is this is a team that puts in a lot of volunteer time, helping out in the community as well. Uh, Coach McKinn, always been great to us and appreciates the coverage. And we love doing it. Dakota, obviously 100% coverage here in our township. There's only two high schools in Macomb Township. Of course, all Lance Cruz North being the other, but they share a border with Chesterfield. So a lot of the kids that live on that side, but everybody that goes to Dakota primarily lives in Macomb Township. Lance Cruz North girls team playing out of the Mac Blue this season. They've gotten off to a one and one start. That's a team Dakota will see later on, maybe in a district. Yep. I think the district is at LCN this year, yep. right? So that'll be an interesting matchup because out of the blue, Lance Cruz North is young and a little inexperienced themselves, but they've got some talent. Jennifer Zaprawa at the line. So now eight different scores for Dakota. So we come up on a minute to play in the ball game and this thing all but over. Romeo turns it over. Now Dakota can be fun to watch, Brad. I know we've talked about it, but you know, from top to bottom, they've got some depth, they've got talent, but they're fun to watch. They, they definitely can play, have a nice inside out game. Yeah, it's a fun style of basketball, isn't it? Yeah, you, you, they're not relying on just a post presence. They're not relying on just a bunch right. of three-point shots. I mean, you, you kind of get a, a mix and match of both. And clearly out in transition, they like to push the ball. They like to run. Outside shot in and out, nearly fell again. Tough luck miss that time. Yeah, this Romeo squad just really ran into a buzzsaw here tonight. And 
they'll just have to regroup and, and get better as this season progresses, and I'm sure they will. And playing out of that Mac White. Dakota turns it over, so maybe one final possession for Romeo. Yeah, first game in the books, Brad, for us. Like you mentioned, we're going to have several games throughout the season. You can go on our uh, YouTube channel, Macomb Township Government Access, and subscribe. And every time a new game pops up there or any of our programming, you can get an alert. Keep an eye on what all of our teams in and around Macomb Township are doing. Dakota will not take another shot, and that will be your final score. The Cougars with a 59-31 win here tonight. They improved the 2 0 for Brad Fetters and the rest of our crew here at Macomb Township. I'm Jason Burns saying so long. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, final score Dakota wins it 59 31. So long.